The work of Jesus Christ on the cross was complete, perfect, and divine. Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus' victory on the cross has us covered, as Paul states here. We live in faith through the Spirit, though we also live in the flesh, and we are bound to sin, every one of us. 1 John 1.8 If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Many believers are burdened for not measuring up to Jesus. There is no freedom in this. It's a no-brainer that none of us can measure up to our Lord, and He is well aware of this. Jesus Christ died for us because we were born into sin, and the flesh binds us to our sin nature. While we dwell on the earth, our earthly house is this tent, which means our body, and we are to walk in the Spirit in this tent the best we can. Jesus Christ walked the earth for thirty-three and a half years, God himself, in the flesh, walked as a man, and he was the only one who would never sin. His walk was perfectly sinless. Ours isn't, nor can it be. Our flesh is at war with the Spirit within our earthly tents. This is a daily battle we face in this world of anything goes with a multitude of temptations. The increase of sorrows we now face are normalizing evil. It isn't hard to find worldly people who will accept dark behavior these days in a world full of temptation and delicacies of the flesh. When a Christian slips, the unsaved around them seem to celebrate. The world will say, it's about time they came around. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. All believers fall short. But Jesus has your back. He died for you because he loves you that much. He is the source of our light. Take comfort in this. The closer we draw to him, the less the world around us will affect us as the Holy Spirit indwells us. If you have sinned, pray about it and move forward. You are already forgiven. Christ foreknew that you would do it and paid for it with his blood over 2,000 years ago. You can take a deep breath and not worry. Jesus has you covered. If you have done someone wrong, humbly apologize to them. When you feel conviction or remorse, approach it through prayer. We have a 24-7 hotline straight to the throne of God, and he is listening. If you do not feel as though you can accept his forgiveness because you do not feel worthy, let me tell you that none of us are worthy of Jesus or his free gift of salvation. Let go of it and embrace him. He is waiting for you with open arms. The enemy will try to persuade you to further dwell on your unworthiness, trying to beat you down. He doesn't waste an opportunity. Remember that he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He always comes at us when we are weak, and he will always try to diminish our faith. He is the destroyer, and there is no truth in him. Keep your eyes on Jesus and not on the sin you have already been forgiven for. You are washed clean. Live in the victory he has given you. You don't have to be a co-savior with Jesus Christ. He's big enough to handle it all by himself. He foreknew that you would slip before he created you, and he loves you. This is the grace of God for all believers. Live in the Spirit and not by the standards of the world. God's grace is not a license to sin, but the ability to live in freedom of the Spirit and mind of total forgiveness when we do sin. Galatians 5.1 Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Jesus Christ wants a personal relationship with you, and he loves you more than you can imagine. Embrace this. Draw close to Jesus Christ and live in his victory.